Hey everybody, welcome to Leon's Chainsaw Parts and Repair. Yeah, we're doing another one of these. So, I really appreciate everybody's feedback on that video from last weekend. Uh, I read every comment, and I know I haven't responded to anything yet, but I appreciate each one. Uh, some are more likely than others, based on just what I know that I've done. But one comment that really stood out, and there may be more than one, I, what I should say is the idea that I am 180 off on the, uh, the timing of that mag. I'm going to check that. And I didn't want to take the valve cover off again if I didn't have to. Uh, more out of, I guess, not wanting to dig into the end, that far into it again if I don't have to. So I brought my compression gauge with me and when I, uh, before I take this mag off, I'm going to test and see uh, as I roll it over and it's coming up on number one, I'm just going to have that, that spark plug out of number one and I'm going to put my compression tester on there and if it's building compression on the gauge, that should mean that I'm on the compression stroke. If I'm getting nothing, then I'm on the exhaust stroke and I'm 180 off. I don't know. Maybe it's a dumb idea. I think it'll work. We're going to find out. Okay. That's about as good a shot as I can get of this. It's right at number one on the distributor cap. Gauge is at zero. Okay, so that should have been the number three firing. So we're coming around on number four which should be, I think, the exhaust stroke of number one at this point. Saw a little something there. We should be coming around on firing of number four. No. Yeah, how many clicks was that? That was two. We should come around to number two, I think. Yep. Yep. Ooh, hold on. I'm not building compression at all. Oh lord, does that mean I adjusted the valves when I was 180 off? Because that would sure do it. I'm not seeing that gauge move at all. That is so strange. Interesting. I hate to say it, but as much as I don't want to, I may have to pull that whole thing apart again. That should build some compression at some point. And I know I'm fighting some compression. Well, that's unfortunate. I think that's what it is. I may have adjusted those valves completely out of whammy. That's unfortunate. Guess I got some work to do. So we are going to eliminate one of the suggestions, and that was that 
condenser could be bad. I'm using one of the aftermarket condensers right now that is available. But I was able to go on eBay and find what is an original part. This isn't an international harvester part, but it was made in Waukegan, Illinois, or at least that's where the company is at. Somewhere on here, yeah, Oops. somewhere on here I dropped it. That side says printed in the USA, this side says made in the USA. And that's at a time that, in my estimation, that means something. So we're going to go ahead and drop that condenser in here. But before we do, we are going to measure the capacitance of both just to see. Because if it's, this one is no good, I want to get rid of it. I don't want to throw it in a box and then look at it years down the road and wonder, hey, it's not worth a damn. That's not my style. I want garbage in the garbage can. You know what I mean? One of the, actually several suggestions that revolved around, hey, send that damn mag to somebody that knows what they're doing and have them test it. And I am, I'm with you guys. If I don't get things to where I'm satisfied today, this thing is going to come home with me. And that's what I'm going to do. I'm a stubborn, you guys might have noticed. Stubborn son of a gun. I don't want to do that if I don't have to. Alright. One wire, two wire, and that washer. Okay. Aftermarket. Not aftermarket. Well. Better aftermarket. I don't remember what I spent on this fluke meter, but that was the whole reason that I bought it. Was to get something that would read capacitance. Alright, so our new 21st century aftermarket. 234. Two twenty eight, two twenty nine. I don't think there's anything wrong with this, but it rattles when I shake it, and this one doesn't. So I'm gonna use that one. Yeah, see that had a custom spacer on it. Interesting. That to me is a question mark. <laughs> Goat's going crazy up there. I don't know if the video picked that up or not, but it was moaning away. Things can make some weird ass noises. Do what I think I did. That washer was supposed to go around that. Oh, what a dummy. I sure think it was. I don't want to blow out that rubber. Uh huh. Oh well. Why do it once when you can do it twice or three times? Actually, that's not funny at this point. I've done too many things twice or three times on this tractor. Tell you one thing. Uh, working on it when it's up here and not at my house where I can just 
take a little break, chill out, when it pisses me off, go, you know, do something else, work on a saw or something, stack some firewood, whatever. And up here, I've got to try and plan everything out and bring everything that I think I might need and then realize I don't have everything that I might need. Oops, that clamp is a persnickety little turd here, and I don't like it. Come on. Ooh, there we go. There we go. I want it to hold that condenser tight, and I don't want it flopping around. Okay, that's good and tight. ready to rock and roll. So everything else looks pretty good in here. I mean, again, I just put that new coil in and it's sitting properly, whoop, properly so it should be engaging. Yeah, that's some dielectric grease. Okay. I saw that shiny spot up there. I'm like, wait a minute. But that was some dielectric grease that I put on that I forgot that I had put on. Should have a good positive connection if I install it the right direction. That needs to slip back. There we go. See, these things are not that complicated, and that's part of why I'm so irritated with myself that I have not been able to get this damn thing right. Nothing on this camera tractor is that complicated. I mean, if I actually adjusted valves 180 out, that's a pretty dumb mistake too. I guess we'll see. Alright, I'm going to get the cap, we'll test this right here. Okay, so, I'm just going to hold this here, I guess it would help if I plugged in the coil. I don't remember exactly where the rotor's positioned. Within four turns, we should see a spark. That was a good one. It jumped through the paint nice and blue. <sighs> Don't know what else to say. I'm going to go over there and see if, uh, if I adjusted valves 180 out. Okay. I'll try to make this as unstupid as possible. I have checked, double checked, triple checked. I am certain I am at top dead center on the compression stroke right now. Had a poof. I could feel compression coming out of there. Done that before, but I don't know. I have definitely done something wrong somewhere along the way. Because at this point, one, two, three, and five should be adjustable on the valves. Uh, that is clearly not the proper freaking adjustment, but what? Okay, how did I end up with that? I had to have adjusted something at either the wrong sequence. I don't know. I don't know. Before I get too far ahead of myself, 
So I am convinced we're on number one, compression. Timing marks align. In theory, I rotate this two snaps, and it should be top dead center of number four. There's one, and I'm coming up. I'm fighting compression. So close. Okay. Now, if history holds true, I will have gone, oh wow. <laughs> I'm only about one degree off of that pointer. Okay, so number four should be at top dead center, which means those two can be adjusted. And in theory, exhaust on number three, and I want to say it's intake. See, those are so f Rhymes with duct. I don't, <laughs> I don't understand this. I don't understand this. All right, we're gonna keep going. Two more snaps, and we're gonna be on top bit center number one again. All right, that's going down. There's the exhaust. You can see the exhaust valve moving on number one. Sorry, intake. <sighs> intake has opened. That is clearly very open. Now, we're going to be coming up on compression stroke. And there's air moving past my finger. And I think once again, boom, we're about one degree off on the timing mark. Okay, you guys see it. Those aren't that far up. That would run. That's stupid. That's stupid. I'm going to adjust the valves. And then when I'm done adjusting the valves, we're going to do some rollover test and see if everything holds. I know that sounds stupid, but I am second guessing literally everything at this point because this is so silly. Okay. See if we can do some good stuff here. Number four should have fired. Number one. And once again, right on the mark. One, two, three, five. Okay. Again, whether you do the rock test, the push rod spin test. Huh. Let's roll it over to where we're on number four. I think I just misspoke. I should have said two. Maybe that's part of my problem. Okay. Oh, jeez, I went two degrees past that time. Okay. So now four, five, six, seven. And as we come around, there she goes on the intake stroke of number one. Should have a fuel charge. Now, compression. Okay. If that's not right, I don't know what is. So. I'm going to reassemble all this shit. And I hope it's for the last time.
Okay, we've made progress, but she still won't run right. She's trying to run, but it will not start. And it acts like it's flooding out. So I have the distributor timed the way the book, the mag is timed the way the book claims. And it's on. It's on by the pointer. I've tried every other damn setting in here, but I, I marked it and put it back. But I'll show you what's up. <laughs> Trying. A little less throttle. Full throttle. Wants to. But she just won't go. And because it's been dripping fuel, yeah, there's still fuel in that carburetor bowl. I've got the main fuel supply shut off. I'm not sure where to go from here. Okay, so I feel like we made some progress today. I am now 100% certain that that mag is timed to the engine properly. The internal mag timing is proper. I'm certain of that at this point. I am certain that the valves are adjusted correctly and that they were adjusted at the right time. Like I say, when I was ducking under the tractor, I was looking at if you never dealt with one of those, the timing mark on the flywheel and then on the back of the casting, there's a pointer and tunk, we were right there. So, it seemed like it flooded out almost instantaneously. Now these carbs are dumb, simple, stupid. They're very, very simple. Uh, they've got an idle circuit and they've got a main circuit. And the carb I have is the simplest kind because it's not even adjustable on the main circuit. The only thing, obviously I've got this apart, but the only thing that's adjustable in any way, shape, or form is the idle circuit right here. The other side is fixed. Now I bought this carb I think from Steiner's, I don't know, 10 or 12 years ago because the old one, which my dad did save, I felt was acting up. Oh, crap, that's right, I put it in the... Oh, the uh, ultrasonic cleaner here that I don't think actually works. But the heating element works, and it should have baked loose some crap. So that is a Zenith carburetor just like this. This is a Zenith, and it is not a Chinese reproduction. It's just a much simpler version and it weighs, well, maybe not significantly less, but it weighs a little less. But it's the same carb, and it ran on that tractor forever. So all I can do, I've got a kit coming from Steiner that I'll put in here. And the top gasket, you know, anytime you take these apart, those gaskets tear. And after a couple times, you can see there's some residue left here. I'm just going to clean it up, verify that everything is good. I haven't found a plugged anything. But I'll drop a new needle and seat in it. I mean, I can see a bit of a ring on the tip there. You know, it cleans up pretty well, but maybe it was not seating all the way. Maybe this float needs adjusted. I don't know. I'm going to try and eliminate the carburetor as a source of issue because it. I say when I tried to start it, it flooded out almost instantaneously. Really, it did. It was dripping fuel out of this neck drain. I mean, and that's a low point. That's designed in there so that, you know, if for some reason it gets too much fuel, it just bloop, drips right out. Well, almost instantly, the first time it tried to run, it started dripping there. So, we'll see. Anyhow, just wanted to end the video in some way other than you know, me with a big shrug going, oh, but again, hopefully I'll get that kit from Steiner's pretty quick. I'll get it installed and maybe next weekend, maybe, just maybe, <laughs> actually drive the damn thing, just run it even. It needs new tires in the back, all that stuff, but we'll get there. I want to get it running, so.
catch you guys on the next one.